What do you do once you have completed your unit turn and you're ready to start your swing? The first move out of your starting position is to have your weight transfer forward and as your body rotates, the racket is going to fall back behind you so that the tip of the racket is falling toward your back. It doesn't matter if it's a forehand, a two-handed backhand, or a one-handed backhand, the swing position always allows the racket to fall back behind the body. What this does is it sets your racket to have a path that's now going to be going from inside to outside. If you follow along where the butt of the racket is pointing, you just allow yourself to swing out away. Once you get over here, you're able to release and finish up high over your shoulder. If you've been practicing the ATP forehand, this move is actually gonna feel a little bit uncomfortable because you might have been told not to do the WTA forehand that brings the racket far back like this. If you're doing this motion from an ATP forehand setup, meaning that your racket is staying on this side of your body, as your body rotates, it might feel like you're getting to that WTA forehand setup, but you're doing it from a fluid motion, so you're not stopping there and then swinging. Everything is moving all at once to allow this position to happen. Even though it might feel like you brought your racket really far back, it's not actually as far back as you think, and you're able to swing out away and release your racket to follow through over your shoulder. You can practice this with your racket, but it's a lot easier to learn if you have some kind of weighted club that's longer to visually see where the racket path is going to be falling behind you before you swing or to have a little bit of weight so that you know how your body should be moving and supporting itself. A baseball bat is a good training tool. It doesn't matter that you are practicing a forehand or a one-handed backhand. It's more about understanding what your body has to do to get that position that you want. So if I'm setting up for my forehand and I choose to get the swing path so the bat falls behind my body first, now I'm just going to follow the direction that the bat is pointing to allow myself to swing out and finish over my shoulder. Another benefit of having two hands on whatever club you're using is to see that as you're staying down and you allow that first move to happen, as you send it out, you are seeing how your hands are going to accelerate the racket without having to do much with your arms. So once you can see this position coming through right here before going over your shoulder, you're going to be able to apply that to your racket so that you're going to be swinging and allowing that first position to happen and as you're swinging out to contact, knowing how to release your arm through the ball. You can practice on your forehand side and you can also practice from your backhand side, allowing that first move to happen as you're transitioning your weight, understanding where your weight transfer and rotation is happening, having that first move allow the bat to fall backwards. You're gonna swing out and allow the hands to roll through so that you can practice getting that acceleration from the lag to get effortless power and speed from your racket. Whatever club or stick you're practicing with, always come back to your racket so you can be bouncing back and forth between reps and see how your racket falls behind you because of what your body is doing. And now when I extend out, go back to how you're releasing with whatever club you're using to get to this position before going over. So when you're seeing yourself be here, extending out, now I don't have to do as much with my arm because I'm able to get that racket head speed through the contact zone quickly with less effort before going over my shoulder. And that's true for the backhand side as well. You can allow that position to fall into place because of what you did with your body, extending out, going through, and now finishing up high. If you have a steel mace, this is also a great tool because it has that weight that's going to dictate what your body has to do in order to stay balanced and allow you to perform that move. I like that it's longer and you're able to see where this is falling behind you as your first move starts. 
So from your starting position, you can allow it to fall back because of what your body is doing. And this is going to force you to feel even more pressure or more torque on how that is setting up to be released when you choose to swing. So from here, my body's first move sends the steel mace behind me. And now I'm gonna follow the path that it's pointing on to go out and allow the roll to happen out in front of me before coming around my body. Make sure to practice it on both sides because the move is the same. It always is gonna fall behind you as the first move. So we're here and you're no longer gonna be leading with your hands in the swing because the first move is always sending the racket or in this case, the steel mace behind me as my body is moving forward and rotating. And now I'm swinging out and around my body. If you don't have a baseball bat, you could also use a golf club. It doesn't matter if it's a right-handed or left-handed club, you can still practice it with both sides because you're just using this as a easier guide to see what your body's doing and where the club is falling as your first move. So as my body moves and I'm allowing it to fall behind me, seeing the path that I'm gonna be swinging out away, and now I can release out in front and follow through up high over my shoulder. Same thing on the other side. As my first move, I'm setting up, and when my body steps into it and rotates, it falls behind me because of what my body's doing, not because of what my arms are doing. I'm coming here, extending out, letting it go out through, and finishing up high. Other training tools could also be an Indian club or a steel club. In this case, this is a 10 pound steel club, and this is a three pound Indian club. And these are good because they give you a weighted feedback. What I prefer about the other ones is that that extra length is just a easier visual guide for you to know when you're doing it correctly. Set up on your forehand side, allow it to fall behind you as the first move, not because of what you did with your arms, but because of what you're doing with your body, extending out, following through in front of you, and finishing up high over your shoulder. And if you're using a club like this, you could do it one-handed. I don't think you should be doing too many at high speeds because sometimes it does put a little bit too much pressure on your elbow if you are allowing it to just kind of swing quickly. And before you know it, you end up hurting yourself and having to take a little bit of time off. So take it slowly if you did choose to do it one-handed so that you're just able to see where you are and guide it through. It's not about emphasizing how strong you are with your arm or with your hand. It's much better just to understand the body position and allow yourself to get to that position because what you're doing with your body, swinging out away from you and following through up high. Understanding what your body needs to do is gonna benefit you much more than trying to do it with just one arm. And remember to do your backhand side so you're setting up it falls back as the first move. You're coming here because of what your body did. You're swinging out away, following through, and finishing up high. Remember, if you're doing it correctly, it probably is gonna feel like you're getting to that WTA position where they bring it back too far behind them, but it only feels like that because you're not used to having the first move fall behind you. So even though it feels like the WTA position, it's not actually all the way behind my body. And now I'm able to pull through and extend out before going over my shoulder. From my starting position, my body transfers its weight forward and rotates and I allow the racket to fall back behind me and I'm extending out over my shoulder. Here and getting here, extending out and following through up high. Even though I talked about this technique applying to the forehand and both the one-handed and two-handed backhand, this applies to all your shots in tennis, whether you're hitting a slice, both a forehand or a backhanded slice, the racket is going to fall behind you as the first move before extending out. So even if you're doing a forehand slice, the racket is gonna fall behind you and then you're gonna extend out. You don't want the first move to just be that you're pushing out over here. Allow the first move of the racket to fall behind you before you extend out. 
This same concept also applies for the forehand and backhand volleys. You want the racket to fall behind you as you are stepping into it. It might not appear to fall back as aggressively on the forehand, but if you think about having it fall back a little bit as you're moving forward, it's going to prevent you from swinging over the top of your swing and you're going to be more likely to lead with the hand ahead of the strings. Once you start to understand the concept of having the racket fall back as its first move, you can go and practice getting the body muscle memory you need with a rubber band. So you can be holding it and being aware that your first move as this happens is that it's having the racket fall back behind you. So when I first pull at this, I'm here and I'm getting into that crunch down position on the backside before I allow it to extend out in front of me. You can practice this on both sides because it applies to both of your shots. So once you have the concept down, it's about building the muscle memory to be able to execute it on every one of your shots.